Ready to go. Okay, we're back. Anyway, yeah, uh, James Powers handed me a couple of his examples also. Oh, that's and Like he said, a lot of bang for the buck. Look at that. Look at that. Incredible. Beautiful colors. Oh, beautiful. Orchid. Exactly, orchid. The beautiful yeah. infantry blue background and the reddish tones of the orchid and the green. Again, again, this as John mentioned, not as John, but as Justin mentioned, I mean, in those days you had people with swap ties and, oh, I don't like this one, let me have this one, clubs and like that. And if I would got one like this, I would definitely have kept it. This is a keeper, definitely. Let me show you also a couple more. Uh, we've got this uh, man's best friend theme right here. Okay, and it's got the Chicard background that John, the photographer, was asking about. You can see a pattern perhaps back here, okay, that's in the fabric, and yet you have this on top of the fabric. So, very nice tie, very nice. Okay, also, there are a couple of Wembleys that are part of uh, Justin's collection, and these are great because they have the original cardboard in the back. Okay, so this is again probably dead stock, something that was never sold. And as I mentioned, these are both Wembleys, and they're made of Wembley's Northeast non-crush material, and sold for a dollar fifty each. I wouldn't. A lot of money. Yeah, I, I, I still would not try to crush them, but nonetheless, that was a claim. What can I say, man? You know, what sells sells. Okay, very nice ties. Also, in that time period, what was popular were ties that had actual photographs in them. This is the proverbial happy hunting grounds. Uh, your politically incorrect tie of uh, that time period. You got the uh, chief and the squaw in the background right there. And this was produced by Photocolor, mm. one of the companies that did uh, photographic ties. That's one example. And we have another one over here, if I can find it uh, quickly, maybe not. This one basically is uh, authentic cathedral window, okay, wow. like that. Yeah, kind of unique. And that again would be late 40s, maybe early 50s, during that time period of the bold look. And let me show you this one here. This is a popular theme. Justin also has one very similar. These are the ducks in flight. I guess they've just been, uh, maybe one got hit, I don't know. But the point is, this was a very common theme, hand-painted, something like this. And another one which was very popular at the time, the proverbial ship. And since we're on the Queen Mary, I think it's uh, very fitting that we have this one here. This was uh, printed by Arco. Arco was a uh, producer of ties in those days. But that's a typical design of the time period, something like that. And I think we have another one coming up right here. Okay, yeah, very nice. Look at that. It says in the back, hand-painted, of course. And again, this would be late 40s, maybe early 50s. Very nice. And what do you think? Is that uh, silk or acetate? That's probably a type of acetate. Yeah, it might a be acetate. Of, a lot of Hawaiiana in there with the hibiscus flowers at the bottom. And exactly. And something that was really popular uh, in the that 40s. Thing. Exactly. Just like Hawaiian shirts. Yeah. And I may mention also, during that time period, um, you saw in the early 50s the rise of acetate ties. Uh, previously you wouldn't have. Acetate was invented years earlier, but the problem was when people got it, they started to think, oh, it's like rayon. And they would go ahead and iron it and burn it. Right. So it wasn't until the early 50s that the acetate that we use even today was perfected. And then they would take acetate and mix it, mix it with other uh, fabrics. Now, um, let me show you just uh, one more. I think this is a beautiful tie. Actually, there are a couple that I think are just gorgeous. This one here. I bought this. It's not dead stock, but it was probably, I don't even know if it was ever worn. Beautiful colors. This feels like perhaps acetate or an acetate mix. Uh, hand painted in California, and it was sold uh, in Pulley Up, Washington. Ah, yeah. 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 Okay, as a, a shout out for that uh, city. That's this is a, a fashion cr mm -hmm. fashion cravat, mm -hmm. of course. That's one of the things uh, that you might make mention of it, is uh, while there's often labels from manufacturers, there's yes. often labels from the haberdashery. Yes, right, exactly. The actual, the, the shop that sold exactly. it. Exactly, John's right, because 
uh, we've got quite a few ties where they'll say, for example, oh, this is, let's say, a Wembley. But then on the back it'll say, Sam's Haberdashery, Long Beach, mm -hmm. or, you know, wherever. You know, uh, Sal's Shop for Big Men, uh, Long Island, something like that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, good point, John. Now, in those days also, there were a lot of novelty ties, or novel ties. Ties that for us are just like uh, almost silly, but they were novelties. This one, as you can see, has a lot of books, shelves, some lamps, and it's actually labeled on the back, you can't tell a book by its cover, and it was sold in Bullocks, Los Angeles. So those were very popular also in those days. And I've got uh, another one here, talking about novelty ties, if I can find one. It was popular for a while to have uh, birds on ties. This was produced, if I can just look here very quickly, by, yeah, by Cheney Cravats. Cheney had its first plumage series in 1946. I think this is the one that came a year later. But anyway, this was a very popular theme also, birds, plumage, etc. And Cheney was a uh, very famous manufacturer of neckties. Also, this is a famous series, Seven Wonders of the World, of the Ancient World. Okay, yeah, see, Justin likes that one. This was produced by Van Heusen. I forget the exact year, maybe 48, something like that. This is the only one I've seen in person. So I snatched it up probably for a dollar, and that's it. But the uh, Van Cruz? It's, it's, a, it's a Van Heusen, Van Cruz. Yeah, okay. Both, you got that right. Give the man a cigar. Give the man a tie. This is, of course, the tomb of Mausolus, from where we get the word mausoleum. Okay, so these are worth something, but like I said for myself, this is the only one I've seen in person. So unless we have another one coming up here. Oh, okay, bird. Oh, we got some more birds. Oh, we got some ducks here. There you go. Very nice, as you can see. And this was uh, Capwell's, Oakland, California. That's in uh, Justin's territory. Yeah, he's a bay man. Okay. Very nice. A very common theme. Oh, I could buy that one. Let's take a look at this. Oh, beautiful. Hand painted. Mm -hmm. Look at that. And originally it has sequins. You can see a few left over. But of course, over time, the sequins would fall off. And this is a Pilgrim cravat. Rayon. Pilgrim was another very famous uh, company that produced uh, ties. Very nice. And you know what? That reminds me. I've got one that I'm going to show you right now. And it's, it's got sequins just like that. And it's also got beads that were f uh, ground down into powder. That was very popular at that time. Here's a design right here. It's got sequins and it's also got glass in it. Of course, glass that was pulverized. And you see these from time to time. Now, again, as John was talking about, this is the manufacturer's label, Regal Cravats. But this shows you the haberdashery your store was made at, or was, I should say sold at, Smith. Bridgman's, Flint, Michigan. Um, now you like that, John? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't look too excited about it, but still. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the colors on that are really brilliant. Oh, great, yeah. Now, we're going to start, uh, let me give you a couple more, then we'll get to the mid-50s, when the length increased and also the width decreased. This, I think, is also very beautiful. It's called Javanese Scabbards, for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. I picked this up at the thrift store probably for a dollar, and I just love the design. It is all silk, and it comes from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. That's the place it was sold, obviously. Just a beautiful design. I've worn this a couple of times. Yeah, very interesting sort of a um, geometric uh, mirror image. Exactly, yeah. Very much so. Then, i got to show a couple more. This one I love. Basically, it is all silk. I don't know who produced it. This would be probably, I'm going to say, early 50s because of the length and also the way it's constructed. But you can see, of course, the Sphinx. And this is done, and also the pyramids in the bottom right here. And it's done with silver thread. I, I like that a lot. Very nice. And it is silk. And then I want to show this. I forgot to show this one. This is one of the prizes of my collection. This is from the 1939 
New York's World's Fair. Mm -hmm. Now, and it actually was sold uh, at R.H. Macy and Company, New York. Brazilian construction. Most of the New York World's Fair ties you're going to see are silkscreen. This is actually woven in the fabric. So it is it's quite rare. I got this in a lot of ties, and I probably paid about $25 for it. But it's worth quite a bit. And it shows the, the two buildings that are the theme for the... Exactly. Is it the... Parisphere and uh, what was the Trilog? Trilog, yeah. Exactly. Uh, so it's kind of a rare tie. This will be 1939-1940, just the very beginning of World War II. I understand you've received offers for that. Uh, yeah, a forgotten man actually told me, Rob, that he would trade all of his World's Fair items just for this tie. Somehow that had a surprise. <laughs> yeah, Dave, I was saying that. Uh, I had a decline, though. So I'm just... Give me a double-breasted jacket, one that he just, like, super coveted for a, a leather whip-stitched tie. It was like a Western tie, because he saw oh. Jimmy Stewart wearing it in the movie. Mm -hmm. I had the tie. Wow, oh, okay. Like, what do you want? And I said, well, this jacket fits very nice. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah. Well, f so for those members watching, that's Forgotten Man Rob. If you got a good item, he's the man to hit. Oh, there we but go. this is, yeah, it's kind of a rare tie. I'm glad I have it. <laughs> that is a beauty. Yeah. Well, anyway, there are many novelty ties of the period, and I want to show this one also. This is probably uh, rayon, and it has a nice design, very nice design. But if you go ahead and hold it up, you might be able to see that it actually says Harold B. Smith. Right side up and upside down. So it's like a script the cross, yeah. You're right. This was popular in the late forties, maybe early fifties. And I believe they cost about three fifty. At that time the average necktie was about a dollar, dollar fifty. So you had to pay a little extra to have this done, but I think it was worth it. You got some more ties, Justin? Or? Well these kind of fall over into the this one here. Okay. I, oh, nice. I got that. That is Flamingo. Oh, wow, look at that. Uh, 40s along with the other right. Wembley. Exactly. This uh, is a Wembley tie. I, I got 40s. that from a, a woman who was a, a Disney animator in the oh, 1930s nice. and 40s. Oh, Did she so is, it, is it the, because the, it looks like the Flamingo from uh, Alice in Wonderland where they use them as clubs for <laughs> uh, some kind you of thing. You never know, huh? You never know. Yeah. It's possible, but I, that's, it's... It's a collector's, obviously. That is great. That's I love my ties. Yeah. Great ones. And another thing uh, you could you could bring up is, is it was also in the 1950s coming up. There was an era where you had where you had the designer tie, where someone yes, like like we'll Count, like Countess Mara yes, let's get that going. Mm -hmm. uh, would was was the the one of the fashion leaders of. Uh, of the time bringing up a tie 